It's always nice to watch a movie about family, even if it is about the Yakuza. So A Family is a new Japanese drama that was just released on Netflix here in Australia. It follows the story of a man named Lil Ken. He's, well, his name is Kenji Yamamoto, but everybody refers to him as Lil Ken. About how he gets caught up and swept up in the Yakuza lifestyle where they take him in as sort of a, a young man who'd lost his way and who had no family and they became his new family for him. The movie jumps between certain time periods. So we start off in the 90s. Then we get the halfway point of the film is sort of around the mid 2000s. And then the third act is around now. So it's around 2019, 2020. And this movie was really slow, painstakingly really slow. When there's sort of action or any violence, it's really, really, really brutal and really realistic. You know, it's not a drama where it shies away from showing, you know, how horrific someone getting the fuck beat out of them can look. This one really goes for it. The acting and everything was fine. The action, whenever there was a little bit of action, was still shot pretty well. Like I said, the violence was really, really gory. The whole idea of this film is that it's a man who goes from having no family to having a family that was probably wrong for him and then eventually a family that he wants and he needs but he isn't the right kind of person for that particular family. When you're watching an international film when it doesn't have English dubbing and the plot is going along quite slowly you can sort of slip in and out and get bored with the film. Now, this movie is about two hours and 20 minutes long, like it's not short at all. And if you can't handle sitting there watching subtitles because this film doesn't have the option to dub it out, then you're gonna be reading a lot of words <laughs> for a lot of the movie. The love story angle that's going on in this film also doesn't make a lot of sense because there's a point in the film where Yuka, who is the love interest for Lil Ken's character, she tells him that she wishes she never fell in love with him. And throughout the film, there are no scenes that we get to see where there's any sort of, you know, potential for them ever really becoming a couple because she was a girl who worked at one of the clubs that his boss owned. She's essentially like a booth girl who sits there with you, pours you drinks, whatnot, is there to look nice so that you can have this sort of air of, you know, funness about your night. And he does take a liking to her, but he doesn't ever show her, you know, any kind of love or he doesn't treat her really well well and take her out and they go on dates and anything like this. There is one moment before he goes to jail where they sleep together or it's implied that they sleep together. You don't even see it happen. It's great to have an emotional conflict like that where a character is still so in love with someone but they can't excuse them for the things they've set in motion that have affected them personally. But you can't say that the characters are in love if we don't get to see them experience that previously. It's only when Kenji's grown up and he's been to jail and he's matured and whatnot that he's looking to settle down and looking to want to have a family and want to experience all these things. But poor Yuka, she's been doing the single mum thing for the last 15 years, but somehow she's still in love with this man who she slept with one time, maybe hung out with twice, and I'm supposed to believe that they had this unbelievable connection where she's brought to her knees about how in love she is with this man, but she hates him for everything he's done. That part I didn't really buy at all. The directing was really, really nice, so some of the shots that were in this film were gorgeous, like stunning sort of stuff. Really shows how beautiful Japan is. You know, there was lots of open farmland spaces. There was shots of the cities. Just the way that the country itself is built up is really, really nice and really lovely to look at. But yeah, if you're looking for something that's a little bit heavy, like if you want something that's <laughs> that's pretty emotionally heavy and draining, and if you really, really love a slow burn drama, then I definitely recommend this one. Definitely cool to watch a Japanese film here in Australia. We don't get a lot of them, obviously. At the moment with the lack of film releases, we're getting more and more international films onto like Netflix and Stan and Shutter and things like this. Check them out, guys. Get on there, watch all the international stuff because you get to watch a lot of really cool movies and stuff that you probably wouldn't have seen. It's chockers at the moment on there. Like if you just go into coming soon, if you check it out, there's a bunch of international stuff. There's still a bunch of international stuff coming out just because we don't really have any Western films coming out on streaming for the next couple of months. So overall, I'm gonna give a family six out of 10. So let me know guys, have you watched A Family? What do you think of it? Comment down below and let me know. Have you seen any other Japanese films? Like do you prefer the live action to the anime or vice versa? So as always guys, just click through to another video and we'll keep having some fun. I'll see you on the next one.